and I will um, see you guys probably later tonight at the Encore. Why don't you come to the Encore? Maybe. All right, he ain't going to the Encore, but I'll be at the Encore. I'll see you soon. With both the session at the Bellagio and dinner behind us, we open the Bravo Live app, see that the Encore has two games of 51020 running, call the poker room and get on the list, then jump in the car and head that way. Knowing that we are fifth or sixth on the list, we plan on playing some 1500 cap 25 while we wait. Get down to business. And we don't have to wait too long. Less than an orbit in before we pick up our first real playable hand, pocket jacks in the small blind. With five limpers in front of us, yeah, five limpers. We make it $45 to go. Everyone folds except the button, which is a little strange. You'd think that if her hand was strong enough to call a raise from one of the tightest opening spots on the table, then she would have just raised herself when three people had limped in front of her, but whatever. She shoots me a mean glance that's giving you aren't going to bully me vibes and calls the $45 off her $300 stack. I continue for $65 on the six deuce three rainbow board and she wastes very little time before shoving her remaining $287 into the middle. To which I insta call, obviously. The board run out of queen of diamonds, ace of clubs isn't my favorite, but what am I going to do? My money is already in the middle. She tables pocket nines, sees my jacks, and returns to her purse for more money as the pot is being pushed my way. We're off to a good start. About an orbit or so later, we open under the gun with ace-jack offsuit to $15, and the train of calls begins. Hijack calls, cutoff calls, small blind calls, and the big blind calls. This behavior you tend to see a lot at these stakes. Players just don't three bet their hands enough and find calls with hands of varying strength. Because of this, what happens is that you don't win as many pots. You have to walk through a minefield of all sorts of ill-constructed ranges to win a pot, but when you do, that pot is much bigger than it probably should be. Eight players in this game, five of us see this flop. What kind of shit is that? Queen, 10, seven, rainbow. Both blinds check and action is on us. We have a gut shot and one overcard and half the encore in this pot. A continuation bet here would likely thin the field, but getting everyone to fold would be very unlikely. Us getting called by worse would also be very unlikely, but action checking around would be nice. We check. The hijack doesn't concur. He bets $45. The cutoff and small blind fold. The big blind with her fresh short buy-in calls, and now with these odds and a gut shot to the nuts, we call as well. The turn five of clubs doesn't improve me in the least. The big blind checks, I follow suit, and surprisingly, the hijack does as well. Free river. I'll take it. Three of hearts. Blech. Mentally, I'm done with this hand. Even if check two, I doubt I turn this hand into a bluff. It doesn't come to that, though, as the big blind now leads out for $85, and both myself and the hijack let this go. <laughs> The very next hand, the player to my left puts on the under-the-gun straddle. 
The under the gun straddle generally promotes action in a game, whereas the button straddle does the opposite by forcing the only two position with fourth bets, aka the blinds, to fold all but their best hands. The under the gun straddle therefore is always encouraged. The button straddle should have most players looking for a quick table change. The first action in this hand is taken by the hijack. He opens to $25, which is called by the woman on the button. The small blind calls, and I look down at, oh my, aces. Who looks down at aces in a spot like this? Not only that, but I hadn't played 2-5 in a minute. I had to do some quick on-the-spot math to figure out a raise size that might get the desired effect. That effect being, I wanted one caller, not a bunch of chain folds. I size down a tiny bit from my initial thought of $165 and make it $130. Action folds back to the hijack and he re-raises to $310. The button and small blind quickly fold. I go deep, deep into the tank here. Rarely do I think this long about a hand, but I tanked for over a minute on this decision. We're almost 400 big blinds deep. Should I call? Should I re-raise an amount that will pot commit him? Does he even realize how deep we are? Do I think he's good enough to fold kings if I just shove? Similar to the lady I got into the hand with earlier, he's giving I won't be bullied vibes. We settle on the exploit line here and raise. I make it $900. Now it's his turn to go deep into the tank for a minute. He comes out with guns blazing in the form of a $1,600 shove. Come on, clap your hands! Needless to say, I call. Then do what everyone does in this spot. I chant, no king, no king, no king, repeatedly in my head about 37 times. He doesn't have to show me. I know he has kings. Jack of spades, seven of clubs, four of spades. So far, so good. He exposes his kings at this point. Deuce of clubs. Come on, baby, hold. Queen of clubs. We hold and double up about 20 minutes into this 2-5 game. An orbit or so passes before I play another hand. The lady under the gun limps, and it's at this point I come to realize that she pretty much limps every hand. I raise to $20 with pocket sevens, and this raise gets called by the hijack, the small blind, and the under the gun limper. Four of us see a flop of deuce eight three with two diamonds, and both blinds quickly check. This is a very different board texture than the hand with ace jack offsuit, and with only one player behind me, I could probably find some continues here. I could go either way, so I just picked one and checked. The hijack behind me checks, and the next card is tabled. The three of clubs. Now the small blind leads out for $25. Under the gun folds, I find the call with the nut under pair and the hijack continues. I'm not in love with this spot, especially with the player calling behind me. Hopefully the river just goes check, 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 and I can just show down and win because improvement for this hand really isn't in the cards. And that's exactly what happens when the nine of spades falls. The action checks around and by some miracle, Pocket sevens are good, even with the bet call over call on the turn. The very next hand, we look down at Jacks again from early position and open to $15. Another train of calls ensues. Low Jack, Cut Off, and the Big Blind all get into the mix. The Big Blind and myself check the Nine of Hearts, Five of Spades, Queen of Diamonds flop. The Low Jack and Cut Off check behind us. I really have no incentive on betting the turn ace of clubs and this street checks as well. However, the jack of diamonds river, well, that changes things. The big blind now leads out for $20 and I quickly raise to $80. Low jack and cut off fold and the big blind tanks before calling. I table my hand and she frustratingly throws her hand in the muck. 
She then asked me if I wanted to change seats. I declined the offer. She follows that by saying that she thought that my insane poker prowess would save me even in a bad seat. To this, I completely ignore. What's that? Switch seats? No. Oh. Your extreme poker prowess would take care of you in a seat where you're going to Minutes later, after spending about an hour at this 2-5 game, I get called for that 5-10-20 game that I was waiting for, so we rack up. There were two 5-10-20 games going, a must-move and a main game. I don't have any footage from the must-move game as I wasn't quite sure if I was going to vlog it or not. I did flop a monster hand at the must move, and I speak about that and the reason why I didn't vlog the game during the mid-session update, which is coming up next, by the way. So we're going to do a quick, super, super quick mid-session late update here at uh, the Encore. And I got to talk fast before YouTube penalizes me for this music playing in the background. Um, after the Bellagio, after lunch, headed to the win. Uh, tried to get into the 5-10-20 game, but there was a list. So I got on it. I jumped in the 2-5 game instead. And right away, and right away, things went my way. Um, Aces versus Kings in my favor for a full double up. Um, won another sizable pot in the 2-5 game with jacks versus pocket nines. And uh, shortly after, they called me for the 5-10-20 game. I'm still kind of on the fence on whether I should be vlogging the 5-10-20 game or not. The player pool here in Vegas for 5-10-20 isn't that big. I'm probably giving up a, a ton of information by recording it and putting it all on YouTube. But I don't know. I'll make that decision at a later date. So, so far tonight, I didn't vlog my time at the must move game in in the must move game third hand in your boy that's me picked up pocket fours saw a flop of nine four 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 ways and won um a sizable pot in fact i doubled up i doubled up in that hand so shortly after that they moved me to the main game the main game isn't nearly as good as the must move and since arriving at the main game i think i'm down about a hundred bucks so good session at the bellagio Good session at 2-5 Aria, and so far, a great session at 5-10-20. Uh, so, we're going to hang out. We're going to hang out in the main game. We're going to see if it gets any better, and that's your update. Wasn't as quick as I thought it would be. Back in the day, moving from 1-3 to 2-5 was scary. From afar, the player seemed much better and advanced. The pots seemed huge. I soon found out that the players weren't better or advanced. Then moving from 2-5 to 5-10, same thing, same feeling. I felt a bit lost when it came to bet sizing and seeing four and $500 turn bets, insane. So sitting down in this 5-10-20 game, I'm not yet comfortable. The first hand I see as I'm moving my chips from must move to main game is a turn check followed by a $1,600 bet followed by a check raise to 4,000 and a call. Um, this is the turn, you guys. So bear with me here. It's going to be a bit before my comfort level reaches home game status. That being said, I know better than to sit down at any game as scared money. The money in front of me is always in play. Always. Two hands later, we looked down at a very playable ace jack of clubs in the cutoff with a hijack raise to $60 in front of us. I bump it up to $200, which gets cold called by the button and the third blind. Remember, this is a three blind game. The original opening hijack folds and three of us are off to the flop. King queen 10 would be nice, but instead we get eight six ten with two hearts and one club. 
Mmm, not close. Sandwiched between the big blind and the cold caller, I follow suit and check when the big blind checks. The button checks behind. The nine of spades turn isn't so bad. Nine of clubs would have been much better, but it is what it is. The third blind now leads for $400, and with four tours straight on board and the player still behind me, I just get out of the way. The button finds the call though. The king of hearts hits the river and the remaining two players check. Now here's another big difference in these games. The players run these games way more than the dealers do. In lower stake games, it's basically the dealers enforcing rules and playing the cop. Here, not so much. The third blind tables pocket sevens for a straight and the button holds jack seven suited up in the air and shows the third blind. Everyone sees it, but he never tables it. The dealer begins naturally pushing the pot to the third blind as he has the only tabled hand. The third blind very quickly says, no, 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 he had the best hand. What? I showed him, I showed him that. He had jack seven. Jack seven. The man, the table, the hand was in the table, you telling me to push yeah, the yeah. pot, I push in the pot. Yes, I'll show him that. The dealer then says, the hand wasn't tabled, but if you tell me to push him the pot, I'll push him the pot. He pushes the button the pot, and we continue to the next hand. As many of you can attest, this would never happen at a lower stakes game. Like, ever. card dead for a bit, but eventually we get into another hand. The straddle is on here, so we are playing 5, 10, 20, 40. The hijack limps in for $40. I follow suit from the third blind with queen eight of spades, and the under the gun straddler checks. Three of us see a flop of king of clubs, three of spades, jack of hearts. We have a few things going on with this flop, and absolutely nothing at all at the same time. Strange. The flop checks through. The turn four clubs completes my nothing and warrants another check by me. The straddler follows my lead and checks behind. The hijack bets $120 and we both fold. I'm 0 for 2. A lot of hands of nothing for a while until I pick up ace queen of diamonds under the gun and open to $50. The small blind or first blind calls and the third blind calls. So there are three of us to this flop. Ace, jack, king with two diamonds. Both blinds check here and I've basically got this entire board covered. That's a good thing, but also not so good as it's going to be hard to really build a pot. I check this back and hope for some stabs from the field on the turn. The turn four spades is not the action inducing card I hoped it would be. Both blinds check again and find folds when I bet $120. Honestly, I was feeling more comfortable at these stakes a lot faster than I thought I would be. Here the first blind folds and I just complete from the second blind. The third blind checks his option. I lead out with purely a gut shot on a flop of six of diamonds, queen of hearts, jack of spades, and the third blind just folds. I spend a few hours in this 5-10-20 game. This game, coupled with its local 2-5 counterpart and a morning of Bellagio 5-10, and not to mention that Korean barbecue still working its way through my system, I was getting tired. It was time to just head out. home or home safely um really quick wrap up because uh lillard is here um 
The 51020 at the Bellagio went rather well. Uh, up about 2200 in that game. Up about 1800 or so in the hour that I play 2-5. And then up, I don't even remember, maybe 500 or so at Bellagio 510. But down, I was down $40 at the Korean barbecue spot. Um, but overall, good day. Best day of the year so far. I'm still on the fence about what I'm going to do about blogging the 1020 game. is probably not in my best interest to show um, a lot of it until I get overly comfortable, we shall say, in the game. But for right now, I'll just show you little snippets, and I'll tell you how I did, and that's about all my session. That's about it. Um... What else do I have to say? If you like the vlogs, like the vlogs. <laughs> Hit that button, share. You just say it. Do all the things. If you like the vlogs, like the vlogs. Leave a comment. I might get back to you. Probably all the things. Have a good night. Yeah, so if you like the vlogs, like the vlogs. Hit the button, share, leave a comment. I might get back to you. Probably. And I will catch you next time. We're going to go inside. We're getting ready to film season nine, I believe, of Poker Out Loud. Burning real bad, feet don't touch fire. Can't see us coming, light and striking down. So we are done with filming season nine, day two of Poker Out Loud. And um, I'm not going to tell you how we did, because then if I tell you how we did, there's no need to watch the whole thing. But take a look at my face. Do I look upset? Do I look upset? We have 10 big ones. You need to go. Lily is playing a, what are you playing? Circuit event? She's playing an online circuit event and we'll probably get going after that. When you see me making this walk is for one of two reasons. Either I'm doing the mid-session update or the session is over. Um, tonight's session at the Encore was kind of... Sorry to disappoint you, but I didn't mess up that many times this time. <laughs> Not that many. Near perfect. Hmm. Good things. Good things. Uh, really quick wrap up because uh, Lillard is here. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about how much of the 51020 I vlog, if any. Blah, blah, blah. Uh... Picked up pocket aces, doubled through pocket kings for... So slid into the must move game here at... Uh... Picked up pocket aces, fell to double kings uh, for almost a full... Picked up poppy. We're gonna hang out in the main game for a while, see if it gets any better. And that's the night so far.